Instead, I'm joined now by Dr. Fiona Godley, the editor-in-chief of the British Medical Journal. She's been calling for greater transparency from the drugs companies. Have you now got it from Roche, finally? Finally, we have what we think is the full set of data on Tamiflu from Roche. So you're they satisfied? Satisfied on this one case, but the absurd situation that it's taken four or five years of uh, really obsessive scientific relentless work by the Cochrane Collaboration, investigative journalists at the BMJ. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a kind of hide-and-seek, an Alice in Wonderland world where this data should be available and it's taken all this work to get it out. But, but the world's most august health regulators, including the World Health Organization, were satisfied by the data they got back in 2010. I mean, you could say that a company should only release as much information as the regulators need. Anything else is intellectual property that they want to keep to themselves. Well, the problem with that is how are we to know how much data there are if the company says they've given what they think they should give and the regulators... But it's the regulators who decided. I mean, the World Health Organization said, this is OK, we trust this stuff. Well, fine, but they didn't really know how much of the iceberg was under the water. So, as we now know, there were 74 Roche-funded studies of Tamiflu, only incomplete picture of 15 of which the European Medicine Agency had had access to and only four inc incomplete picture of only four NICE had had access to. So what you're getting is a diminishing amount of information available to different levels of regulatory oversight and also regulators can't be necessarily uh, expected to always get it right. So what we're hoping is that by having the information out for independent scrutiny right. that we would be more likely to get a, a true picture of the drug's effectiveness. But given what we know now um, what the regulators have known for some time, would you say that the money spent on Tamiflu, which is a lot, 424 million, is money well spent? I can't tell you that yet. Um, in about a couple of months, the Cochrane Collaboration will deliver what we hope will be a, a definitive answer on Tamiflu. The information I'm, I have available suggests that it, it isn't hugely effective and it does have side effects which weren't properly declared at the time. So we have a, a, a much less promising picture about this drug than, than was thought. But Roche still stand by the efficacy of the drug. Um, the World Health Organization hasn't changed its tune. And to be honest, at the time, and probably even now, there was nothing else available that was better. Well, we don't know that. Uh, Tamiflu has never been compared, compared directly against paracetamol, for example, uh, or other um, well-known treatments for, for uh, influenza-like illness. And so we really don't have a good picture of how it compares against How is that possible that those, those simple comparisons haven't been made? Uh, you may well ask. It's been compared against placebo, um, which is what the regulator often asks for, but never against uh, paracetamol. So in the wider picture, do you think that we're getting more transparency from the drugs companies about the products that they're putting out on the market than we were, let's say, 10 years ago? We've got a, a definite shift. So from now on, there will be greater transparency about drugs being licensed now, 200, 2014 onwards. Not all companies, there are very few companies have signed up to this, GSK being a major one. Other companies very much are resisting, pulling back. Uh, uh, they are uh, supporting efforts to put legal uh, barriers against the European Medicines Agencies. And why is that, do you think? Because they're very frightened of what they consider to be the commercial implications of transparency. They, on the one hand, say they support transparency on the other hand they are actively suing the European Medicines Agency at the moment to prevent uh, transparency of clinical trial data they but fear it, about the commercial but is this a fear of transparency or is it a fear of excessive regulation I think it's a fear of transparency I think that there can be any scientific reason for keeping these data hidden they are hidden for commercial reasons because the companies fear that they will lose out commercially if they're made available. But isn't that the point? They are commercial companies. They're trying to make money. If they reveal too much information, they're giving away their secrets. Well, uh, the, the model... It's a fine the, line between the regulators and, and the intellectual property out there in the public uh, space. Uh, they would argue that. I would argue against that. The molecule is patented, is their possession, but the information on whether the drug is effective or not evaluated on public um, members of the public, paid for by public money, should be in the public domain. Mm. Dr. Fiona Godley, thank you very much. Thank you very much.